Hey everyone, it's Jack from WhatCulture.com. Now fresh off Perry Perry Chicken Gate last week, there is a new scandal that has rocked what Culture Towers. It's not Richard's fault this time. Me and Richard are equal victims in this. King Ross, one take twaddle, whatever he calls himself. He promised he was only going to be in the studio for 20 minutes. And what would you say he was, what would you say? What sort of time? At least double, you know. At least double, at least. Pro, I would say 45, 50, maybe. Maybe not that. It was, it was more than his allotted time. And it was Ian in my time. Kenny's outside waiting now, tapping his little Scottish feet. So without any further ado, I have wasted quite a bit of time there, ironically. Uh, let's look at all the ups and all the downs from this week's Smackdown Live! So we start off, unfortunately, with a down, and this was the opening segment between Randy Orton and Bray Wyatt. It was more of the same, really, except now there's a new storyline coming into place where Orton, or as I've spelt him on my notes incorrectly, Orion, like the constellation, if you just switch up the... Non-stop under here at whatculture.com. So yeah, Wyatt appeared on the Tron and threatened Orion and said, look mate, you're, you're just a human and all the rest of it, I'm a god and all that. But then Orion was like, I'm not scared of you actually. And he went backstage to look for him. And this was a theme that continued throughout the show. And it, it's different, it's a different sort of feud for Wyatt, but it's the sort of feud that he needs after maybe three successive wins in a row. Uh, because the whole, I'm not scared of you shtick is very unique, but it doesn't work when the guy loses all the time. There's no reason for anyone to be scared of him. This was one for further down the line, I feel, but Wyatt desperately needs to win this. Uh, but unfortunately, it is a down. And unfortunately, again, we have another down to kick things off with the first match of the show, which was a big eight-man tag team match between the Usos and the Ascension, maybe one of the oddest teams ever combined. The Usos are without face paint now, of course, but the Ascension made up for it by dressing as kind of like half half arsed sting like they couldn't really be asked to put the full sting face paint on so they just did half their faces they were of course facing the babyface team of american alpha and the tag team champions heath slater and rhino and it was one of those matches where everyone was just thrown in without rhyme or reason it's not the sort of thing you want to see on smackdown which is focused a lot on tight little storylines where everything matters and everything makes sense recently this was a bit of a deviation from that unfortunately because of that i'm gonna have to give it a down why were the Ascension aligned with the Usos? Why were the champs aligned with their biggest competitors, American Alpha? You could say on paper their most dangerous competitors. So, yeah, it's a down, I'm afraid. But the finish of the match was actually quite good, and I'm going to give that an up of its own. Uh, the finish saw the Usos injure Heath Slater's leg. They did what they did to Chad Gable a few weeks ago, and it continues their sort of ruthless, limb-snapping heel thing, and it'll make their title match a lot more interesting come no mercy. So... Good stuff at the end, good stuff. The second match was another one of those ones that felt like a bit of a mishmash. You had Carmella v Natalia, Nikki and Naomi, that's a lot of ends. Uh, Carmella stole the win over Nikki Bella for the second week in a row, which kind of builds that storyline a little bit, but it's very, very obvious that the writers are just kind of stretching this one out until the pay-per-view. There was nothing really inspiring here. For that reason, I'm gonna have to give that a down as well. The downs are winning. Could SmackDown turn it round? Spoilers, the end of the show is really good. They, they are going to turn, Smackdown are going to turn it around. They're going to turn it around. Next, we have Dolph Ziggler and The Miz in what was one of my personal WWE promo segments of the year. It was fantastic. It was in both men's hometown of Cleveland. Uh, there was a wonderful bit beforehand where The Miz uh, got Maurice to stick a picture of himself over a picture of LeBron James in the hallway of the arena. Uh, that was very funny. But um, the promo segment itself was very serious. Miz shouted out his own parents in the crowd. His dad looks very funny. Uh, and then we went over to Ziggler's parents and he said, oh, it must be such a shame to raise such a loser. Then Ziggler came out and defended himself and his parents and his career and everything and said, look, I want one more shot. And Miz went, you're not getting a shot unless you put your career on the line. And Ziggler said, okay. Their, their rematch at No Mercy is gonna be for Ziggler's career. And it was specified. This doesn't mean he's gonna go to Raw if he loses. He's not gonna go down to NXT if he loses. This is it. If Ziggler loses, he's gone. And you know, the way his career's been going in WWE the past few years, maybe it's legit, maybe he is gonna lose, maybe, maybe he really will be gone, maybe this is the last we'll see of Dolph Ziggler in the WWE, but regardless, it was a wonderful segment, it's certainly built my interest for the match, it's definitely enough. Then, the queen of my heart, Becky Lynch, made her entrance, but then immediately was jumped by Alexa Bliss, who beat her down, did the whole, you know when the heel holds the title really close to the face of the, but it didn't really make any sense, because Becky's the champion, she's already got the belt, but 
that's it was still quite a good segment there, there's nothing really they could have done with this feud to make it feel fresh after the contract signing so it's best they just kept it simple waited until the pay-per-view and yeah it, it showed alexa to be a brutal heel uh also a conniving one you know she ambushed becky from behind uh becky is surely going to be vengeful heading into the match so nothing to complain about here very short segment but it did the job it needed to do it's enough and alexa bliss is just wonderful she's, oh my God. she's all right she's all right She's not amazing. Alexa Bliss? Yeah. Oh my god. I think she might have overtaken Becky in sort of my affection. And now we move on to the third and final match. What's that I hear you say, Jack? There are only three matches on SmackDown. I know the sky is falling. Everyone run for the, the shelters. Get to the chopper. It's all right. The last match on SmackDown was a WWE title match and it went for around 20 minutes. So everyone's still got their fair share of wrestling. And can you complain when it's a man as skilled as AJ Styles? dominating ring time for so long. Not like when Ross dominates the studio time, But I'm all right, the, the, the match was, I'm gonna calm down, the match was a good one, the match was a very good one. Uh, I've seen it rated as high as four stars online uh, in some reviews of the show. Uh, it did the job it needed to do. It showed both men to be very even. John Cena was on guest commentary in a rare instance in WWE of a guest commentary spot going, all right, it, it, it all made sense. Cena is a natural when it comes to talking and putting other guys over. Uh, on commentary if not in the ring, but he is these days anyway. Apart from all that, the match was a good one, well worth the 20 minutes, uh, it's enough. And I'm gonna give a special up to the end of the match and the post-match segment, which was all booked to perfection in my opinion, heading into the triple threat at no mercy between Cena, Ambrose and Styles. Uh, in the match itself, Cena was attacked by AJ on commentary, got up on the apron, inadvertently distracted the ref, which stopped uh, Ambrose from pinning AJ, the ref couldn't count the fall quickly enough. Then AJ rolled up Ambrose, who was going back to have a go at Cena, and the ref, of course, counted the fall. AJ retained. After the match, Ambrose got in Cena's face, as he had every right to do, going, what were you doing? Why were you getting involved? You've cost me the title, effectively. Uh, Cena hit him with the attitude adjustment. AJ ran down, tried to ambush him. Again, Cena hit him with the attitude adjustment and stood tall to end the show. Now, I know you might be thinking, oh, here we go. It's another show which ends with John Cena standing tall over his competition. But if you think it's been quite a while since we've seen Cena in such a dominant position, and it really does push him up to the even level of Styles and Ambrose heading into this match, because remember, he's coming off a big loss to AJ. And it, as bizarre as it sounds, after his loss to Ambrose as well, Cena may have been the underdog in this match. Now all three guys look pretty even heading into it. So no complaints at all about that final segment. I thought it was one of the best things on the show. And to close things, that's, that's an up. So if my very basic math is correct, that means that the ups have won five to three. It's yet another good week for SmackDown. They're knocking it out of the park on a regular basis these days, it seems. And how important could that be on a week when Raw reportedly did its lowest rating ever? Yes, it was up against Monday Night Football. Yes, it was up against the US presidential debate but it's not a good sign for the so-called flagship brand. So without any further ado, I've been Jack from whatculture.com. Thank you very much for watching Ups and Downs. Do you agree? Let us know what you think in the comments below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. You can follow me on Twitter, at Jack underscore the jobber. I'm just rattling these off. What's the last day? I'll see you soon. I'll see you soon.